This is Camden, and welcome to Jules Guide's Rock and Roll Camden Pub Crawl. He was a boy from the city. She was a girl from Camden Town. What an unusual couple in the hustle. Camden's famous for its market, its live music, and of course its pubs. So we're going to do a sort of pub crawl and try and take in some of the most significant musical and historical locations en route. And it's also famous for being where Bob Cratchit and Tiny Tim live in Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol. But we're going to start in Chalk Farm. The reason we're starting here is because behind there is the railway. In the 19th century, when Camden first started to get industrialised, all these houses around here were built for the workers who worked on the railways. And they were from England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. And uh, they used to get into a lot of fights uh, with each other. Uh, so they decided, I know, we'll build a whole load of pubs for each nationality. So Dublin Castle was for the Irish, Edinburgh Castle for the Scots, and the Pembroke Castle was for the Welsh people. She walked into a bar room. Yeah, the Windsor Castle has typically closed down, but that one was for the English. But we've got plenty of other ones anyway, so it's okay. Over this Chalk Farm station, which is where Madness took the photo for the album cover of Absolutely. That was their second album, one of their best, in my opinion. It wasn't actually that entrance though, because the entrance was... No, you're right, no, no, you're right. Let's just go around to the other side. I think that the, photo, the cameras down there get down there without getting killed, and they were like here. Like that. Up there's Haverstock Hill leading to Hampstead. Noel Gallagher used to live just up there. Supernova Heights is up that road, yeah. <laughs> the Steels yeah, okay. pub and everything. But we're heading that way to Camden. Yeah, this is such a pity. This used to be Marine Isis. This was my favourite ice cream parlour. Everything's closing down. I feel like Charlton Heston at the end of Planet of the Apes. <gasps> you maniacs! You blew it up! Ah, oh, damn you, God! Damn you all to hell! <laughs> That's how I feel when I look at this place and what they're doing. It's madness. This is the Enterprise. I did a stand-up comedy gig in here. Perfectly reasonable place to take your second pint, especially if you're going to the Roundhouse over the road to watch a gig. She walked into a bar room. Stood up this might look like a kebab shop, but it's a very special kebab shop. Remember, I used to be able to come here like any time of night. And it would have all walks of life from businessmen to beggars all crammed in the back watching this kind of French Elvis called Daniel Jean Renault. And there were these old saxophone players too. Great times, man. And it would just have poor people, rich people, a man in a suit having come back from the city on a late night. Yeah, they used to play late night. Uh, we played about more than 10 years ago. Yes, good. Why did it change it though? Uh, the council reduced the hours. We have to close earlier than we used to. Oh. Is it, uh, what time? I don't know. I mean, he says they closed down, but I bet you any money that you can still go down in there. I reckon they must have a lock-in. It's got to be. Just opposite there is the roundhouse, which used to be for train locomotives to pull in and turn around. They had a sort of turntable like you got on your Hornby Railway, but it got turned into a warehouse because the trains got too big to fit on it. And then in the 60s, it sort of turned into a music venue and loads of famous people played there, like David Bowie, Rolling Stones. Just letting Zeppelin play their first gig here. And they say this is where punk was born when the Ramones played here. Oh, and that's Anthony Gormley on top there. This is where George Michael did a free concert for the NHS nurses. He's a really nice bloke, George Michael. And the Doors did their first and only ever UK concert here, I do believe. This used to be Bartok. Before that, it was called the Belmont. It's quite popular with musicians because there used to be a recording studio just across the road. Lemmy from Motorhead used to be seen in here by the fruit machine. In fact, he was seen by the fruit machine in any pub he went to. When I'm not wearing a bowler hat and uh, a cravat, I am one of the world's Hawaiian shirt wearers. And <laughs> I can't resist. It's an illness. All my Hawaiian shirts come from here. Yeah, a dungaree and Hawaiian shirt combo. That's smart. Now we're talking. He said he never believed in love. He said it's just for fools and the young. The reason why there's all these horses everywhere is because this, uh, this used to be the stables and it was like a, a Camden goods depot, bringing industry and jobs to the area. And the horses lugged stuff around off barges and trains to be taken off around London. I think the last horse was actually retired in 1967. It's amazing, really, that they still had horses here up until then. They found a home. They found a We're going to the Amy Winehouse statue, which is in the stables market where they don't like you filming. So we're probably going to get chucked out. Really have. They had a fight, didn't they? The Sex Pistols had a fight in Dingwalls, which is just in there, which we can't show everyone now. 
in there is where they took the photograph for the, the Clash album cover. Thanks to the nice woman in the office, she's phoned all the security guards and told them not to let me film in there. So uh, we have to do this a bit surreptitiously. I mean, this is what I have to put up with. In case you're wondering why you don't get a video every week on the, on the, on the channel, it's because they, honestly, anyway, I had a big argument with them in the, in the bakery as well. But this Holy Arms is where um, Amy Winehouse used to drink and she used to have a special drink called a Rickstasy, which I suppose, for the sake of this, we have to have one. I need one. Oh, sorry. Three parts vodka, one part banana liqueur, one part Southern Comfort, one part Bailey's. But anyway, but you don't do them anymore. Uh, in that case, I'll have a pint instead. It sounds disgusting. So oh, yeah, there's thing, Waltz. It's where the bass players from The Clash and The Stranglers had a bit of a fight outside, and then it resulted in The Stranglers being ostracised from the punk scene. And there's this little bit on the right there where the cow barges go inside. It's called Dead Dog's Hole because that's where all the detritus and dead dogs and yeah. dead bodies sort of wash yeah. up. It used to be like trains used to go into there in the 1800s yeah. and then they'd lift off all the goods and stuff and yeah. put them onto... Uh, stop saying yeah, like you sound so interested. No, I am. Yeah, right. <laughs> when morning TV was quite a new amazing thing in Britain. It was like, oh wow, we've got TV AM. It starts yeah, yeah, at 6 yeah, yeah. a.m. Oh, so cool. So they, all those egg cups on there were, were, were because it was the TV yeah, AM TV building. AM. But now it's the MTV building. My did used to work there and there was this, um, this woman who was doing the hair and makeup for Adam Ant when he came in and she came down the stairs in a, in a terrible state crying. She was like, I just had to attach his toupee. And <laughs> she was mortified, as were we all, that poor old Adam Ant, the 80s beauty icon for all of us all here. Nothing to say about this pub except that Pat used to do the quiz in there. He used to think he was hilarious. He used to go, as a free pint for this? And he'd ask a question. <laughs> Someone would answer the question and he'd go, stand up, what's your answer? Go to the bar, get a free pint. Of water? You're wrong. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> but he did it in an Northern Irish accent, whereas I did it in some sort of weird Welsh Australian accent. Do you know that song by Madness? No. Walking round you sometimes, hear the sunshine. And that's the song about Arlington House is this house, which is a DOS house. And I was walking past here the other day. Just among from the homeless hostel is the Good Mixer, a notorious Camden hangout for sort of musicians and fans and stuff. It became really popular after Blur started hanging out here in the 90s. Because this has always looked like a bit of a scuzzy pub to me. It looks like a, it looks like a kind of place to get beaten up for no. me. Listen, you don't get beaten up in a place where everyone's a fan of Britpop. Dude, everyone in there now is vegetarians and they remember the good old days of... What's you do Yeah, yeah, well, it's... I don't need to pop in. Oh. Are you in a band? No. I heard only people in bands are allowed in here. Well, do you want to ask? Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. Well, there's Amy, playing pool. <laughs> oh, apparently, yeah. apparently she was known to have a game of pool in here. Have you ever been to Mecca Bingo? I went with you. It's excellent. <laughs> This is the, the Dublin Castle over here. This is one of the most famous music pubs in Camden. Yeah. Amy Winehouse used to go and uh, pull pints behind the bar here. I think it's all started off with when Madness first uh, played there, around 1979 or something. I bet you any money you've played a gig there. I have indeed. I've played <laughs> yeah. many a gig there. Yeah? How many bands can we see that have got names similar to other bands but aren't actually real You're like the yes, sex cells. that's sales. right. Deep Fury, Deep Purple. The oh, Uptown oh. Monotones is a kind of like a mixture between the Boomtown Rats and the Undertones. Yeah, it's just... Flaming well, lips. Squidge, squeeze. Squeeze, squeeze. Squidge, squeeze. squeeze, squeeze. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, um, people are really getting a bit desperate with band yeah. names these days, aren't they? Johnny Cash. Oh, God, I only just got that. I'm so thick. Have you ever been to the Rock and Roll Rescue Shop? So where does the money go to, though? Uh, Tony Blair's wall new wallpaper for his last... Vegas penthouse suite. Wonderful, that's great. No, 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 it goes here. Look, on there. See, there. And the last thing it goes to is bees. Oh, it lovely. Money to bees. I'm pretty sure this is Depeche Mode's keyboard. It is. Is yeah. it? It's amazing. This is still programmed for one of their um, their gigs. It's got all the songs programmed in for, I think it was the uh, Violator tour or something. <laughs> but the bloke in the shop doesn't know how to sort of, un how to program it or how to use it properly. So he's terrified of turning it on and deleting everything, but it's all in there. When I work at Rock and Roll Rescue, I like to drink. Amphetamine and his coffee. Yay! The 
the Camden Palace, which is just down there. It was actually the Camden Theatre, which you know, opened, in, opened in 1900. Huh? It's, not, it's called Coco now. Coco? Oh, it's been called Coco I'm so for old school. about 15 years. Yeah, Bon Scott, who was, uh, was he, he was in ACDC. The last place he went for a drink was in the Camden Palace. Um, and then he staggered out and he, he stumbled down towards Dublin Castle and he bumped into an old school teacher of his who thought he looked a bit worse for wear and he sort of helped him into a cab and then he died later that night. It's opposite Inverness Street Market is the Electric Bourne, which is one of the most famous and iconic music venues in Camden. They had many incarnations under the same ownership. In the 70s, when they first opened up as the Electric Ballroom, the first band to play there was a band called The Greedies, and that consisted of Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols, Paul Cook, who was a drummer from the Sex Pistols, and the guys from Thin Lizzy, and I think Gary Moore. Now, Sid Vicious was present at that gig, and it inspired him to form a kind of one-off band called The Vicious White Kids, and do a show called Sid Sods Off, to raise money for his trip to New York with his girlfriend, Nancy. Actually, it was a trip from which he never returned. Why so, uh, didn't Vicious ever come back? Because he had a drugs overdose after having been accused of uh, murdering his girlfriend. It's weird because that when that film Sid and Nancy first came out, the one starring Gary Oldman, that was the first time I ever went to the cinema to see an 18 certificate film. It's called an X in those days. Funnily enough, I went to see it at uh, um, the Camden Plaza Cinema, which was just opposite the Electric Ballroom. And I didn't realise the irony of that or, or, or the appro how appropriate it was until now. The Joy Division, Sisters of Mercy, Adam and the Ants, Clash, Talking Heads, the Smith. This is one of the oldest pubs in Camden. It's been here for ages. I think it's from like, like 500 years ago, although it wasn't called the World's End back then. It was called the Old Mother Red Cap, where there was a cottage where this woman called Jenny Bingham used to live. Jenny Bingham was pregnant by the age of 60, but the bloke who made her pregnant got hanged at Tyburn Gallows for having stolen some sheep. Her next bloke disappeared mysteriously, then her parents were hanged for witchcraft. Her next fella got found burnt to a cinder in an oven, but she was let off because it was found out that he often slept there in order to escape her nagging tongue, which is fair enough, I suppose. She ended up just sitting on a stool here with her red cap and her black cat. She was a bit scary and regarded to have mystical powers or something. I'm more of a melodic death metal kind of guy. I'm a rocker, I'm a metalhead, I'm a punk, I'm all those things. I mean, yeah. I, I like everything from Elvis to death metal. I mean, all so them. I span. The generations. Yeah. People wearing all sorts of outlandish mad stuff. The only person he's getting stared at is me. But see, that's where, what Madness actually used to live upstairs. Yeah. I didn't know that. I know they used to, Madness used to buy their, their, their Dr. Martin boots at this shop. Is that, is that the one about which the song is? Our house in the middle of our street. This fella says that that's the one he's talking about. First, first shop in the world to sell Dr. Martin's. That's what I thought, it is. They, that, that's the first ever Dr. Martin shop. In Camden Town, I'll meet you by the underground. This is the, the Devonshire Arms. It's on Kentish Town Road. It used to be a proper like goth, biker, leather type hangout. You might look at that thing on the ceiling and just think it's an air conditioning unit, but actually it is a relic from the days when you could smoke in pubs. It's actually a smoke extractor. So now when you go into a pub, it just smells of BO and sort of sweat and beer. If you look at the posters as well, they all have a nice uh, yellow tint. More of a golf club back from, I think, early 80s, maybe late 80s. Yeah, we've got, I mean, there's a stage down there. Yeah, we spawn lots of local bands. Uh, tonight we've got a band called Gessica. Very good. Check them out on YouTube, Facebook. Um, and in general, you can find us on Facebook, as in the dev, NW1. It's got a full schedule of shows there. One of the most famous musicians to come out of Camden was, of course, Amy Winehouse. I'm just coming up to her house here where I think she died, actually, number 30, Camden Square. And it seems to have turned into a kind of shrine. Amy Winehouse died on the 23rd of July 2011, aged just 27, from alcohol poisoning. She was the first British female artist to win five Grammys. People keep trying to nick the road signs as sort of mementos, not to be encouraged, that kind of behaviour. Buy you both a drink for your help. So after that rather sombre interlude, this is our final pub. And this is the one that was built by the English for the Scots. And don't ask me why it's spelt like that. I've heard that it's because the English were trying to take the piss of the Scots or something. 
No, the idea was that the, 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 the Scots, the Irish, the, the Brits and the Welsh were all fighting with each other. That's why they built these different pubs. Oh, Cheers. Uh, and remember, if you like my videos, please hit the subscribe button or throw me a donation on PayPal or my Patreon page, which is uh, all in the links below. And uh, also, if you like the music, don't forget to check out my sister's album, Little Lost Lou. Um, and that's also in the text description below. Or if you care about anything I have to say or do ever and want to come and have a private tour of London, then uh, just get in touch via my website, jewelsguides.com. Cheers. But no broken bones.